With the introduction of the True Depth camera, Apple opened the doors for facial tracking to be used for more than just unlocking your phone. Since the iPhone X, many developers have worked hard to exploit this new technology, and one obvious area was motion capture. Traditionally, automating facial animation has been done using a simple audio file and a set of defined poses. But now, Mocap X wants to put an end to that to allow you to capture detailed facial animation directly from your phone. In theory, this sounds perfect for developers. There's no need for expensive equipment, you just download the app, install the plugin, and you're good to go. Any animator can now save time by simply recording the animation and editing it in Maya, rather than keyframing it from scratch. This does sound like it could be ideal, but does this app live up to its promises? Continue watching to find out. The app. You can download the Mocap X app for free from the App Store, and you initially don't need to pay anything to use it. As it stands, there are currently three options available. You can continue to use a free version, but you are limited to only 30 seconds of recording per session. And this is restricted to the device you are using, be it an iPhone or an iPad. You also don't get access to the real-time facial capture option in Maya. If you like, you can buy more time, so you can increase that basic 30 second limit. The prices range from $20 for 5 minutes up to half an hour for $50. So this can get quite expensive if you plan to do a lot of capturing. This option still also restricts you to only recording on your device too. Finally, you have the Pro version, which is a one-off payment of $299 and unlocks everything. So, you get access to live recording, plus you are no longer limited when recording on your phone. You also open the option for head and eye tracking and multiple device support. The Mocap X app itself is very minimalistic. Once opened, you are presented with the front facing camera view. So you essentially see yourself. Well, it is you, but it's like you're wearing a mask, which is the default model tracking your head and facial movements. It does this quite well, although some of the mouse shapes aren't accurate and the eyebrows seem to move together instead of separately. All in all though, it's good to see a 3D model working so you get an idea of what data you will end up with. You can change the default model to a more basic version, but what would be nice is if you could take your own rig and see that moving on the phone instead. Not sure how possible that would be though. Along the bottom of the screen you have options for streaming the capture or recording it onto the device. As mentioned earlier, with the free version you can record up to 30 seconds of data at a time. So if you need to record for longer, you will need to pay. You also have the settings tab where you can find information about the app and the connection settings which allow you to stream to a desktop running Maya. In addition to the main facial capture option, you can also switch to a remote control. Again, this is used mainly when connecting to Maya and it allows you more control over your character or as shown in the developer's example videos, a vehicle. Custom rig setup. In addition to being able to record data on your phone, you can also take these clips, which Mocap X calls them, and apply them to any rig inside Maya. After you install the plugin, you are given a new Mocap X shelf with all the main tools. I decided to test this with a facial rig I'd created a while ago, just to see how flexible it is when using a custom rig. The first step is to tell Mocap X what controls you are using. So you select all the facial controls and click the Create Mocap X Attribute Collection button. Next, you need to spend some time setting up the main poses the clip will drive. There are a lot of them, but the developers provide a handy pose board which shows you what the poses should look like. So, if you were to set up the cheek puff for example, all you do is pose the cheeks, select the controls and click the plus icon next to the name and the tab. 
pose is then stored in the pose library and you can adjust it with a slider, just how you would if you were editing a blend shape. If you want to create a more custom shape, like having both eyes blinking at the same time, you can follow the same steps, but instead use the Create Mocap X Pose button on the shelf to start the pose. You can then update the name in the pose library to whatever you like. The pose board does make things easier, so it's a nice addition but a reference image from the side of the head would be useful too. The developers do provide an example head for you to look at, so I ended up referring to that more than the pose board to get the correct poses. Another feature I like is the ability to update poses you have already created. At first, I didn't realise this feature existed, so if I wanted to update a pose, this meant I had to delete it and start again. The process is a little different to the tutorial videos though, which is what threw me initially, and I only discovered this while experimenting with the tools. In the tutorial video, there is a green update icon, which wasn't visible on my version. Instead, to update a pose, you need to press the blue solo pose button first, and then a plus icon appears. You can then use this to update the pose. So this should save you a lot of time. Streaming versus recording. Once the rig is set up with all the poses needed, you can then load a clip and see how it looks. And an example clip comes supplied with the files you download. To do this, you first create a clip reader node and then point it to the clip file. Once loaded, you will see all the data appear below it and it will animate as you adjust the time slider. The next stage seemed a little strange to me like there should be another button to automatically do this for you, but there wasn't. What you have to do next is manually connect the clip reader attributes to the pose weight attributes, but you can only do this one at a time. This does take a while and it does get quite tedious, so I wrote a script to do it for me. I do wonder why the developers haven't supplied something similar though. Everything else seems quite well thought out apart from this. Another thing I had to do was adjust the data for the head and eye tracking, just reducing its effect slightly because the values were too large, so everything was moving too much. Again, this ended up being part of the script I wrote, but it would have been a nice feature for the developers to add. An idea would be to simply introduce an offset on the values, either globally or on a per pose basis. Once I finally connected, I could see the facial features, head and eyes moving and following the data, which all came through well. What's good is that with the data imported, you aren't then simply stuck with it. You can animate on top of it, so you can tweak the capture before you bake it onto the controls. That was a clip reader tested and working, so next I wanted to try live streaming, although this turned out to be nowhere near as straightforward. No matter what I tried, I just couldn't get the Wi-Fi connection to work. Even experimenting with some of the options the developer gave me, like disabling my firewall, didn't get it to work. So I had to rely on the USB connection instead, but this also had issues. For it to work, I needed to have my iPad connected to my PC with iTunes running. Firstly, I don't use iTunes on my desktop. I just don't like it. But to get this to work, I had to install it. Once installed though, I had issues with it not recognising my iPad, and this continued, so some days it would work, and others it wouldn't, and I would end up connecting, disconnecting, running iTunes, closing iTunes, it was just frustrating. When I finally got it to connect, and got Maya to recognise it too, I then ran into issues with the head moving uncontrollably. I did get this to reduce slightly by reorientating the iPad so it was in more of a portrait position. But then I tried reconnecting some of the head connections and that seemed to fix things. Once it was up and running though, it worked well, although there were a few glitches every now and then. So once recorded, you would need to go in and clean those up. Should you invest? There is a lot to like about MoCapX. When you eventually get it up and running, 
it takes a lot of the strain out of facial animation, but you have to hit that sweet spot with the poses to get the best out of it. Obviously, this is something that will come naturally the more rigs you set up, but your first one will involve a lot of trial and error. There are areas of mocap X which work seamlessly, like the app and the Maya plugins, but when you try and connect the two, things start to break down. Connecting the iPad to Maya just ended up being more trouble than it was worth, so most of the time I ended up recording the data on the iPad, exporting it, and then importing the clip to Maya. A workflow that worked well for me. It's a real shame though, as having the device connected could be a really powerful feature. You get a lot to play with in the trial version, so downloading it is a no-brainer. That is unless you have an iPhone or an iPad that doesn't have the true depth camera. You never know, you may not experience the same issues I did, so it's worth a try. Upgrading is where things get complicated, but if you manage to get things working with the trial version and you plan on capturing a lot of data, then actually upgrading to the Pro version would be beneficial and cheaper in the long run. All in all, Mocap X is a great facial capture solution. Yes, there are connection issues and some bugs to iron out, but if you can get around that, you will find a powerful tool which could save you time and money. Well, there we go. We've come to the end of another video. If you found it useful, please hit that like button to show your support. While you're at it, you could also subscribe and enable notifications so you are kept up to date with future videos and community posts. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments below or contact me through the Ant CGI Club Twitter account and I will try my best to reply. Alternatively, you could post them in the Ant CGI Club Discord server where I spend more of my time. You can find an exclusive invitation to join in the description below. Remember that you can also join the Ant CGI Club to help keep future videos free while also getting access to exclusive rewards like scripts, models and rigs. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again, this is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.